Today I'm going to be going over engine starting procedures on a Citation 5. This is the same procedure for a Citation 5 uh, Ultra Encore. They're all basically the same. And even the Citation 2 is very, very similar with the exception of um, having a ground idle switch. But I'll talk about that in a separate video on the Citation 2. Um, so to start with here, I'm looking at the starting engines checklist for a battery start. This is the company checklist that we use, and uh, notice that it's it's sort of abbreviated. Um, it steps through, um, it basically just says start the engine and then check the engine instruments, uh, move the ground idle switch to high and then start the second engine. And it doesn't really expound on exactly what we're doing and what we're looking for. So before I actually do the uh, engine start, we're going to take a look at the manufacturer checklist and see what that says. Here's a copy of the manufacturer starting engine checklist. It says that we can do either engine first, which is correct. Uh, I typically like to do the left hand engine, the pilot side, number one engine um, on empty legs, and I'll do the right hand side, number two engine on uh, legs with passengers just because if for some reason uh, we have a, a passenger who forgot a bag in their car or something like that, it's a little bit easier to uh, to uh, get out with only the one engine running. Um, but in any case, moving down the checklist here, what it tells us to do is press the start button, and uh, we'll see that the start button illuminates. That indicates that the starter relay has closed. Then we'll move the throttle from the cutoff position to idle once the N2 turbine RPM has reached about 8 to 10 percent. And that is ensuring that the uh, engine has enough airflow through it to keep everything going in the correct direction, basically. If we, if we prematurely brought that throttle out of cutoff, uh, we might get a hot start or basically blow things up in the engine because uh, there's not enough airflow forcing everything out the back. And then uh, right after bringing that throttle out of cutoff, we're gonna look up at the ITT and look for a rise in the ITT, which shows the engine has lit off. And we're gonna keep our eyes up there to make sure that uh, we don't have a hot start because that would rapidly uh, rise if we were getting a hot start uh, and we'd have to cut the engine off at that point. And uh, assuming that everything is going well with the ITT, right next to it, we're gonna see the N1 fan speed. And we need to make sure that that fan speed shows some sort of indication prior to reaching 25% N2. So what that means is that the fan at the front of the engine needs to be turning at least uh, a little bit in order to show that it's not locked up. Like so in the winter, if we got some ice back there or uh, there was some obstruction of any kind basically preventing that from turning, that would cause damage to the engine if we ran the engine without the front fan being able to turn. So that's why we're looking for that uh, that N1 rotation by the time N2 reaches 25%. Um, and then as the start sequence continues, the, uh, the, the uh, starter generator will, uh, or I should say the generator control unit will turn the, the starter generator from a starter into a generator at about 38% uh, N2 and, uh, you know, does things like terminating, like shutting down the uh, boost pump, fuel boost pump, and um, disengaging the starter. Uh, all those things happen at 38% N2 and the start sequence terminates. And then everything should stabilize at about 46% N2. And then we can move on to the second engine um, after turning the ground idle switch up to high, which is, um, that will cause the, the engine to idle at about 52% N2, which is what we need to do a cross generator start. Before starting the engines, I wanted to point out a little detail of the throttle levers and how they work. There's the, this uh, trigger that you have to squeeze and lift up on in order to pull the throttles out of the cutoff detent. And uh, at the end of the flight, we'll pull it to, to bring it back into the cutoff. Um, that's uh, just a safeguard to uh, prevent you from shutting an engine down in flight by accident. Uh, and uh, that's also uh, 
detail that a lot of new pilots to jet flying don't get when they're first starting an engine. They'll, uh, they'll be wrestling with it, wondering why it won't come out of the cutoff position. And it's because you need to squeeze the trigger in order to lift it out of cutoff. We're doing this video one more time with uh, starting the engines and we'll take things a little bit slower here. So we'll go ahead and uh, press the starter. We see the light come on. Looking at the N2, we see at least 8%. Bring it out a cutoff. And now we're just looking at ITT and N1. At 38% N2, start sequence terminates. Everything looks stable. And now we can turn our ground idle up to high. When the second start button is pressed, because it's a cross-gen start, both power relays are closing and we'll see both lights come on. On this engine startup, I'm just going to be focusing entirely on the engine gauges and the enunciator panel so that you can see the uh, indications for each item as the engine start. Starter buttons pressed. We see the 8 to 10 percent N2. Fuel's introduced and the ignitions are firing. There's the light off as the ITT rises up. And this, this airplane, for some reason, the right-hand engine seems to idle kind of high on its own, even when it's not in high idle. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that, but that's why we're seeing the, uh, the N2 higher than 52% right now. Here comes the second engine. That start sequence is complete. 